I want to jump right into Intel's branding getting dumber than ever. Yeah, how's that even possible? I know, right? First of all, I mean, okay, let's go way back. Remember when they launched Core 2 Duo? Yeah. Okay. What was up with that? You had to say, I bought a Core 2 Duo dual core. If you wanted to describe the processor, you got like the, the whole thing, the whole branding of core. I bought a two, 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 two. <laughs> Especially in the context of how recognizable their Pentium brand was at yeah. the time. How strong that brand was at the time. It just made no sense. Okay, then the brand had weakened a little bit, but I, I, I never felt any of this was really necessary. I and I don't. It was really strong. I don't think just about. Anything could have been dumber than core, core two. And then instead of core three, we get second gen core. The f are you talking about? Like the, the whole thing. Anyway, we, we've all kind of accepted it now, right? So you got your, you got your i7 and your i5 and your i3. They eventually added i9s, which were rumored at the very beginning. It was supposed to be, this is, this is my understanding, it was supposed to be that on the consumer side of things, you had your core i3, which was your very basic, like, low end, but then also you had Pentiums down there for some reason. I don't know, whatever. And then, like, Celeron still exists. It's, do you really need six tier? Okay, it doesn't matter. The point is, you had your core i3, that's your low end. You had your core i5, that's your mainstream gamer you had your core i7 that's your like premium enthusiast gamer overclocker whatever else and then that was on the consumer side then you had high-end desktop and it was as far as i knew supposed to be that those were core i9s i'm talking way back i'm talking like 12 13 years ago or whenever this was and then they just didn't they were just all core i7s and the whole thing made no sense because you had the this product stratification that was like basic mid-tier high-end consumer and then like high-end like workstation slash enthusiast gamer whatever what and they, they were so much more expensive so you could have two different core i7s from the same generation and one of them's quad core and one of them has like 10 cores in it or whatever yeah it was wacky and then so and then instead of core three core four core five we went with second gen core third generation core fourth generation core and then so on and so forth so anyway they've done away with this i3 i5 i7 thing supposedly for the upcoming meteor lake refresh generation and instead what we're getting is core ultra 5 core ultra 9 core ultra 7 which is like honestly kind of better than the whole i thing in my opinion, but here's where things get really stupid. These are going to be first gen core or first gen core ultra. What? So what would have been called a 14th gen Intel Core i9 14900K? Or so not not would have been called this that that's previous naming scheme. New yeah. naming scheme is Intel first gen core ultra nine. 185H. What a name. It's so long. <laughs> is, is it a competition at this point in the industry to make your products as unsearchable and undecipherable as possible? We already have point? a first gen core. It was stupid the first time. We don't need another one. Anyway... Um, also, like, if you're gonna say first gen, like they said, they like the, the the old naming scheme. Even this is weird. Like 14th gen Intel Core, you don't have to put 14 anymore. Really, if you put 14th at the beginning, you know what I think it is. It's because they're gonna shorten the product names. But if that's gonna happen, then just don't make it long in the first place. I think Intel just has a really high sensitivity around the number 14. I think that's a traumatic number for them. Why? Because they were stuck on 14 nanometer for like a zillion oh. years and it cost them their business with Apple. Yep. That so that's sense. what I that's what I actually think this is about because this is this is too dumb to be a <laughs> rational decision. This is obviously an emotional like, decision. We refuse to do it again. Uh, current benchmarks are not great for um, 14th Gen Meteor Lake, but that doesn't necessarily tell us anything that um, 
Yeah, wait a minute. Current benchmarks are poor. Did I say 14th gen meteor? No. Okay. No. Sorry. Not 14th gen. Whatever it is. Core Ultra, for, I thought, who cares? Meteor Lake. Um, current benchmarks are apparently poor, but these could be very early samples or not optimized for the particular benchmark that was running. This is a leak. Um, and in other news, Intel has discontinued their cryo cooling technology after four generations, with 13th gen Raptor Lake chips being the last ones supported. Can we can we pour one out? Can we pour one out here for for Intel's cryo cooling technology? There. It's just well, I don't know. I don't have a glass, so I, this is my only this is my only fluid vessel right now. The point is, what about yourself? Do you do? You, are you familiar with Intel with Intel cryo cryo cooling? Uh, not really. Okay, but I am a fluid vessel. Super cool. I think the neatest thing about Intel's cryo cooling initiative is that a company as corporate and boring as Intel ever got to get a project like this out of the test lab. Basically what it was, was a Peltier assisted water cooling setup that had a whole software component that monitored the temperatures both of the CPU and also the surrounding area so what that it heck? could chill the CPU as cold as it could go without crossing over the dew point threshold and causing condensation. That so sounds sick. Cool would have been absolutely amazing on AMD where the chip power consumption wasn't so high that it overwhelmed the tech. The Sorry, when I say tech, I don't mean the technology, the yeah. thermoelectric cooling uh, Peltier effect module. So the way, that a, the way that a Peltier works in this context, or okay, first let's start with how a Peltier works if you're not familiar with them. Uh, basically, you power them and then through some kind of wizardry, I forget, it's the kind of thing that at some point I knew but I have to look it up every time I make a video about it because I forget. Because believe it or not, I can't remember everything. So the point is, it's a powered module. You feed it DC power, and then you have a cold side and a hot side. And the hot side would go to a water cooling system to a, that pumps fluid through a block and then over to a radiator. And then the cold side would sit right onto the CPU integrated heat spreader, um, pulling that heat and then getting rid of it on the hot side. Here's the problem though. A Peltier will typically draw anywhere from, I mean, if you were to try to cool a modern CPU with it, anywhere from 150 to, I mean, you'd yeah, have they're to- they're really brutal. Yeah, you'd have to be in excess of you know, 300, 400 watts in some cases. And I don't even think Peltier modules the size of a CPU even go that high. I think they max out in the 250 range. So that's problem number one, is that we're somewhat limited by the size of these Peltier modules. Problem number two is that when I talk about them being rated for 150 watts or 250 watts or whatever, that is the power they are sucking. So if you are yeah. running that Peltier at full tilt, if it is actually powerful enough to cool like a high-end gaming processor today, you are adding like hundreds of watts to your CPU or it's to your CPU to your system power draw. Um, oh yeah. And it gets even better. Remember how I said that we've got that water cooling loop with the radiator to, to dissipate the heat from the CPU. Well, what happens to all the heat that's generated on the hot side of that Peltier from the, the Peltier effect? Well, you got to dissipate that too. So Peltiers are the kind of thing that have been done time and time again okay, in the so enthusiast this was, space. So this was like in standard Intel fashion, other brands made it, but their tech was on it. Yeah. And it was their software that ran <clears> it. <throat> yeah. Yeah. Super, oh, super so they're cool. abandoning the software too. So they're abandoning the whole yeah, shebang. Uh, here we go. Here we go. So going all the way back to 2000, uh, oh wow, that's a very that's a very early Swift Tech oh boy. water block. I love it. Uh, this is not a Peltier one. Shoot, I was trying to find. They had an old block from way back in the day. I uh, I have chill? a blown apart picture on Here my screen is. right now that shows the. Here it is. MCW sixty five hundred T for Tech Peltier assisted water block. This is so cool. Can tell Swift Tech had glown up a little bit by that point. Yeah. Um, 
226 watts. Dang, dang. So this has been tried many times over the years. I, I forget. Someone did a someone did a Peltier assisted uh, CPU heatsink. Oh, you look that up. I'm going to show my screen because I actually like this little model that they did. I didn't realize our camera was going to be covering it, but you can see this white panel in here. That would be the tech or the Peltier. If your wire running out of it, so it's like it's a little layer. It's a it's a fairly small like they're actually very, yeah, small, but they. You can pack a punch if you're willing to power them. I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the awful heat sink that basically as far as I can tell didn't really make it out of sort of first initial small production run. Um yeah, I just I, I can't find this one right now. Maybe maybe someone can link it to me in the chat. The point is, it's been tried a lot of times and every time we come up against the same barriers, which is finding Peltiers that are performant enough to remove the heat from modern processors, which just run so, so hot. Um, oh, oh, also, that, that Peltier effect takes place over the entire uh, thermoelectric cooling mod uh, module. So if you have a super, super hot spot, like on an <clears throat> Intel CPU, and then mostly less heat around the outsides, you're going to need a spreader in between, which adds some inefficiency, um, like in addition to the actual CPU's spreader. So you have to spread it out so you can actually make use of that whole surface area. And the higher the wattage, typically the larger the Peltier module. So you've got these, these, you've got these size limitations, you've got these performance limitations, and then you've got these how do I remove all of this bloody heat limitations? Like if you actually had a 400 watt Peltier that could actually cool a turboing modern like 14th core, 13, like 13900 KS or something like that when it's running an all core load, you would be crapping out 800 watts of heat into your room. Literally double and that assumes perfect efficiency. <laughs> Well, no, it doesn't because any inefficiency loses heat. The point is, you would be you would be just cooking yourself, uh, or paying more for you know air conditioning or whatever else to cool down your stupid furnace of a computer. However, what I liked about this, and I genuinely did like this product, even if I would never use it, was that it was cool. Uh, they had these they had these like yeah. uh, boots that sat over the blocks that they, they worked with their partners on uh, to keep condensation off of them, these like foam insulated back plates and stuff. And what they could do well, even with these modern chips being generating so much heat that they would overwhelm the Peltier. Oh yeah, that's a big thing. If you don't spec it high enough, it actually turns into an insulator <laughs> uh, because it's, it's not metal, Yeah. right? So if it's not actively moving the heat, then it isn't moving the heat and the heat is staying where it is that makes sense that's a big problem that's right that's not good um so there there was some practical use for them if you knew that you were never going to apply an all core load to your computer like literally never within the range of the peltier's effective sort of with within the peltier's effective cooling range you could achieve very low temperatures and you could achieve slightly better overclocks on, you know, the one or two cores or even four cores that you might need for gaming. It's just that I think the timing is just bad. Intel's chips have been functionally not overclockable, at least at the high end where people might consider buying a, you know, $600 water cooling setup or whatever else it is. Yeah. Um, they've been not overclockable for so long. They've been so power hungry for so long that it's just... Right product, maybe completely wrong timing, and unfortunately, it's going away now. And I'm just, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little sad because it's the kind of thing that, as a, as an enthusiast, I just, I kind of love because it's just really cool. What I just power this thing, and then it just moves the heat from one spot to another. We, and there are times when it makes sense. Okay, Luke and I were compa comparing our our eight sleep um, sleep tracking before the show. The cooling and heating module for the two sides of the bed uses a Peltier. Yeah. And the reason it does is because if it used phase change, then it would be really loud. It would need a compressor. A Peltier doesn't need a compressor. Just silent DC current is all it needs yeah. to heat or chill something. That, oh, that's so cool. Uh, my, oh, my water-cooled chair project that we did a while back, that also uses a Peltier with an air heat sink on it. 
So if you're not, if you're trying to cool a human body, which is about a hundred watts, right? Or just like part of a human body, it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. But as soon as you're trying to cool a computer or something like that, it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Um, So I'm sad. I'm sad.